and welcome to day three of the Eva Pattern Sew Along. My name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. And in case you're not familiar, the Eva Pattern is our newest pattern. It's a hybrid between a traditional and a zero waste pattern and it includes a crop top, a peplum top, and a sundress. In today's video, we're going to sew the entire bodice. That includes the front of the bodice, the back, and the straps. If you want to skip ahead to a different part, there are timestamps down in the description box. Let's get started. We're going to start off by stay stitching the armhole on the front bodice. And this is important to prevent stretching in this curved area. So we're going to just stitch a straight stitch slightly, very, very slightly less than our seam allowance. And they always recommend that you start at the top and go down. Next, we're going to sew the darts. And I have this pinned with right sides together. And I like to just put a pin through every dot. So I start at the end of the dart and stitch all the way to the point. And then you want to pull long threads at the end and tie them in a knot close to the end of the dart. And if you have your scissors handy, you can go ahead and trim that thread. So when pressing the darts, it can be helpful to do this on a tailor's hand, especially for the larger cup sizes. And if you don't have a tailor's hand, you could use a rolled up towel. And I like to do it on both sides just to make sure that I get it flat. So just come in gently on the right side a little bit. And then we can finish this seam and finish it with the dart and the side seam together. To sew the strips of bias tape together to make our ties, you want to overlap them with right sides together and at an angle. So each strip needs to have the same angle and then you will stitch kind of from that inside corner to the inside corner. And if you want to test whether it's going to work, you can put your pin in horizontally and open it up. Just a little pre-check before stitching. And then you can trim off these little dog ears and press the seam open. Then to make our loops, I just fold the bias tape in half as I go. So we fold it lengthwise, right sides together. And to make a narrow loop, I'm going to stitch one quarter of an inch away from the folded edge. And I found that using the folded edge as a guide makes the width of the loop more accurate because the bias will stretch out. If I use the cut edge, it really just seems less accurate as the bias tape stretches. All right, here's my strips for the ties. And I've had really good success using this tube turner. So right here, I'm using a lightweight um, rayon or viscose fabric, and I am not going to trim the seam allowance at all, and it will create kind of, kind of a thicker tie, which I really like. If you want a flatter tie, you can trim down the seam allowance. Or if you're using a thicker fabric, especially like a double gauze, I would recommend trimming down the seam allowance. So with the tube turner, you just Stuff it in one end. Poke the leg through the fabric and then close the hook and then gently pull inside the tube. And try not to pull too hard or else that fabric might come off of the hook. So mostly I'm gonna push my fabric over the hook rather than pulling on the hook. And then just push the fabric. So again, just shifting the fabric over. If you pull too much on that hook, the fabric might rip and it'll get stuck in the middle and that is a real pain. 
So I just try to be as careful as possible until I can get that end of the fabric out the other side. Okay, so it happened and the hook came off of the fabric. I'm super bummed about that hasn't happened to me in a long time, but let's try to fix it. So I have removed some of the stitches right here so that I can access the tail and I'm going to get my hook back on the tail and try to pull this right side out. And I think you could try to restitch that, but I'm just gonna like let it go and hope that it's not a big issue down the line. So again, I'm trying to be really careful all right, all right, this is what you wanna happen. <laughs> you wanna get your hook pulled and this end pulled all the way through. You're now like in the strike zone and we can just pull this the rest of the way. Oh my goodness. I guess that was a good learning lesson. We figured it out. Wasn't too disastrous. So sometimes it'll get too bunched up at the end you need to coax it through, especially where your seams are. It'll be a little tricky. All right, here's the tie. It's nice and thick. Here is the section where we cut the seam allowance. It might be a good idea just to go stitch over it either by hand or machine and close that up. But otherwise, this is a great tie. I have my eight little loops cut and I'm ready to baste them onto the center back. So because we need to have a seam allowance at the top and a casing for our elastic, I need at least an inch up here before I place a loop. From the bottom, I have a one half inch seam allowance for the dress. So I'm gonna give myself like three quarters of an inch down here. And you can make these markings using any tool or just with pins. So at the top, I'm going to mark one and a quarter inch. And then at the bottom, I'll just mark one inch. And I want to place my loops in between these two pins. Fold it in half with your raw ends together. And you can place it down and pin it in place. So pin one up there and then one at the bottom. Now I wanna put two more loops in here. So I like to use this tool because I can just stretch it out and align one of these little pointers with the bottom of each loop. And then this will tell me that my other two loops should go right here. So we will do the same thing on this side and then baste both of them in place. So our next step is to stitch the side back bodice to the center back. So I have my side back bodice piece and I have finished the side seam. So the side that is not finished, I'm going to stitch to the center back. Okay, then you want to finish the seam and press it towards the side and repeat for the other side as well. For the back, we want to press our seam allowances to the side. This is pressed and now I'm going to top stitch close to the seam line. This will hold our loops in place. It's decorative and kind of keeps it more stable. Now we're ready to stitch the back to the front. Putting these right sides together, tops up, we'll just pin the side seam and stitch. You'll want to repeat for the other side and finish the seam allowance if you haven't already, and then press the seam open or to the back. 
Okay, now let's sew our straps. I have these folded together lengthwise with right sides together, and these are sewn with a one quarter inch seam allowance. When I press my straps, I like to first press the seam open before I turn it right side out. So to do that, I put a wooden dowel inside and kind of shift my seam allowance down onto the dowel. And then you can finger press the seam open to get it started and then come in with your iron and cruise right down. And that dowel works so well for giving a hard surface on the inside of the tube. So now I'm gonna turn this right side out Sometimes with thinner fabric, you don't need a safety pin, um, but I think it does make it a little easier because it gives you something to hold on to. You could also use a tube turner. Now, I press this with the seam right in the middle. And this is going to be the wrong side of my strap. And so I press that seam open first just to make it flatter. If it was pressed to one side, it would have a lump or if it wasn't pressed at all, then it could be going every which way. So that's just to help keep those straps nice and flat. There we go, all done. So next we want to baste our straps to the bodice. So to the front, we want to have it a half inch away from the edge. And remember to do this right sides together. And then for the back, the strap is going to go onto the side back piece. So just right here. After you baste these on, I recommend trying on the top and making sure that you like the fit and the placement. I also recommend putting in your elastic, just pinning it in when you test the fit. And this will help you decide whether you might want to adjust the placement of the straps and maybe move them more towards the side seam. So now let's sew our facings together. I have my front and back facing pinned at the side seams right sides together and we'll sew these at a one half inch seam allowance. And we do the other side. This seam allowance has a low risk of fraying, so I like to just use my pinking shears and then this also is less bulk than finishing it with a um, serger or zigzag stitch. And then you want to press the seam open, you can use your iron, and finish the bottom edge. And I'm going to use my serger to finish that bottom edge. All right, now we can pin our facing onto the top of the bodice. And I generally like to start by pinning it at the side seams. Make sure to match the notch on the underarm. For the back piece, I recommend marking the center points and matching those. Sometimes the fabric can stretch out, but because the facing is interfaced, it should not have stretched. Okay, now we're going to sew our facing. And I like to do it with the interspacing side up just in case the fabric has stretched at all. The feed dogs will help us ease that into our facing. Now we need to grade the seam allowance and clip this curve. So I like to use my little red snips and just clip about every half inch. And then these straight edges, it's not really necessary. You can do it in a few places if you want, um, but I've been okay not doing it. And then I like to use a bigger pair of scissors and cut back the facing seam allowance about halfway. And this will just create a 
gradation in the seam allowance and that will help it um, help prevent it from looking lumpy. And then I also trim down at the corner in the instruction booklet for this pattern. I have some tips about fitting while you're sewing to make sure that you have the straps the length that you like. I've made this a bunch of times, so I know the strap length that I like. So I'm going to trim and grade all in one go. But in the instruction booklet, there's guidelines for when to trim and grade and understitch and take breaks to check the fit so that you don't get too far along and then realize that you don't like the length of the straps. Okay, after I have this all trimmed and graded, I'm going to give it a quick press. I will press the facing towards the seam allowance and then understitch. Okay, now I'm going to understitch. And what that means is I will stitch the seam allowance to the facing and the stitching is not visible from the outside. You can either do it with the inside on top or the outside of the top on top. <laughs> Now we're going to make the casing for the elastic that goes at the top of the back center bodice. And to do this, we will just top stitch through the center back and the facing one half inch from the top edge. So you wanna make sure you have this pressed nicely um, so that everything lines up. And we'll start right from this seam line and go to the other seam line and backstitch at both sides. Now we can put the elastic in the casing and I have mine already cut out I had a few wrinkles in my casing, but I don't think we'll notice once the elastic is in. So I like to use a bodkin and you slide the elastic into this opening at the top. It's kind of like a blunt needle. From the inside of the top, you're going to go under the facing and just push the elastic through or pull it little bit of push and pull. And you wanna be careful that you don't pull the, the end of the elastic inside the casing. So I like to kind of get all the way to this other side and secure it before I pull too much. Okay, so here the other side of the opening, I push the bodkin through and then I have this end and I wanna line up the end of my elastic with the seam allowance. That's just kind of a tidy way to do it. So make sure you have this end secured and then at the opposite end, also align up the edge of the elastic with the seam allowance and put in a safety pin to hold it in place. I don't have a safety pin handy right now. And then I recommend trying this on to see how you will like the fit. And if you want the elastic to be tighter, you can adjust it now. Also, you might decide that you want to change the length of the straps and you would want to do that now as well. I've already tested the fit, so I'm going to go ahead and secure my elastic by stitching right over the top of it in the ditch of this seam line. All right, that's the end of part one of our video sew along for the Eva Tops and Sundress. If you are sewing view A, you can go ahead and hem the bottom and then thread the tie through the loops in the back. If you're making the peplum top or the sundress, make sure to come back when part two is posted and we will be attaching the peplum and making our skirt with the ruffle and attaching the patch pockets. I hope that you found this video helpful. Make sure to like it and follow the channel to stay up to date on all of our new videos. Happy sewing!